Software Engineering 101 requires observability. It requires knowing what's happening in this application I made. For example, we just shipped a tool called Please Reply at Langflow.org. It's an email address that if you send an email to it, try it right now, please dash reply at Langflow.org. If, if you send an email there, you'll get back a reply that's containing helpful information about Langflow if you asked a helpful question. Um, that's powered by AI. It's built on Langflow, but it's important for us as now production software to know what's going on inside this thing. Um, not so much, um, you know, what, what emails are we getting, but like, what, what is our AI generating, right? How many tokens is it consuming? Uh, what is our open AI or other language model provider bill going to be? How many requests are failing? What data can we use to maybe fine tune future models? There's so much observability can answer and give you um, in a system. It's super important. And usually it's kind of hard to do if you're working at the code level. In Langflow, this is somewhat straightforward. In fact, it's very straightforward. You just have to add an environment variable to Langflow. Um, in case you missed it, Langflow is open source, meaning you can just run it yourself locally. Um, then if you want to host it, we have plenty of videos on how you can host it on our YouTube channel. Um, there's links to that around uh, maybe in, in the corner or similar. Anyway, um, all, all you have to do to add observability uh, to, to Langflow is add an environment variable. And you've also got to pick an observability platform provider. Uh, there's many uh, tools like Arise, Langfuse, Langsmith, Lang, many things. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can add observability to AI apps built with Langflow um, on three popular platforms. That is Langsmith, Langfuse, and Langwatch um, in, in, in no particular order. Uh, it's just Langflow supports these out of the box. And we're gonna look at the value of observability in Langflow. So to do that, we're going to start Langflow. To start Langflow, we just have to run docker run dash p, and then we choose our port 7860 7860. Uh, and we'd say Langflow AI, this is this is all it takes to start Langflow. Okay, um, to use to use observability tools with Langflow, all you've got to do is just add environment variables. So let's let's look at that now. So if we want to use Langwatch with Langflow, we just have to add our Langwatch API key as an environment variable. So we're gonna to go to Langwatch. This is Langwatch, welcome. You, when, when you make an account on Langwatch, Langwatch, this is what you'll see. Uh, so you, you're straight away given your API key. I love this about Langwatch. And honestly, I think it's, it's a great feature. Zero friction, just straight to the API key. So we're gonna go get our Langwatch API key. Don't worry, this is revoked by the time you watch this. And we're going to paste it here in our command to run Langflow. So we'll add an environment variable, Langwatch API key is our Langwatch API key. And we're just gonna paste that and then we're going to run Langflow. So Langflow is going to start up. I just wanna make sure I got this right, Langwatch API key, perfect. And so now while Langflow starts, um, any LLM AI based app we build with Langflow is automatically going to be instrumented and observable in Langwatch. Uh, spoiler alert, it's the same story for Langfuse and Langsmith. So we'll we'll quickly add this and then we'll talk about trade-offs between these platforms. I'll share my personal favorite, but honestly, uh, you're, you're a developer with taste ideally, so you'll pick your favorite irrespective. Uh, let's take a look at how this is going. So um, cool, Langflow's running. We're going to open Langflow. Um, this is Langflow. I'm gonna create my first flow. Let's just do a basic prompting flow, all right? So I'm just gonna click on basic prompting and I'm going to paste in my OpenAI API key right here. Um, I'm just gonna paste that. And let's run a query. So let's go to the playground and say, hello, sure. Um, and now Langflow is going to go to work and generate us some output. Hey there, great to see you here. What exciting project or idea? Okay, cool. So we, we just, we ran a flow. Now let's look at Langwatch and see what has happened. So we're gonna go over to Langwatch right here. Look at that, it live reloaded. We have one message. Uh, and if we click on it, we see more details. So this was the input. This is what Langflow has said. Of course, we can go into more detail here. There's some details about the trace. And I love this. Check this out. So we this is our main workflow. It's called basic prompting. The chat input component was this. And you can see sort of the values. Then we construct a prompt. We spoke to OpenAI. We spoke to an LLM, specifically G, uh, GPT 4.1 mini. Uh, we spent 65 tokens. We paid this much. And we it took 2.5 seconds and we delivered the chat output in 37 milliseconds. And so it's so cool. I love this observability. And you can look at your messages and your trace. Look at this, you, you have just this bird's eye view of this entire thing, it took three seconds. Um, you can also train evaluations and so on. It's just so cool. Um, 
the, the, the level of detail you can get. You can also um, create prompt. There, there's a lot more features here, but I think we're already starting to see the value, right? Like over time, you'll even watch your numbers trend up or down. Are your queries getting slower? Why are they getting slower? Is there something you can do to optimize your prompt? Should you maybe um, create pre-baked prompts? There, there's so much you can do. And that's that's how you do observability with Langwatch. Guess, let's look at another platform just for fun. Let's look at Langsmith. Um, guess what? It's the same uh, story to add observability to Langflow. So let's quickly take a look at the doc. So what we're gonna do is go to Langsmith and you just add these environment variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill my Langflow process here. Um, thank you very much. And now we're going to copy, we're gonna construct a little string. So we'll come here and we'll just make a new, a completely new, a new document. And we'll just paste these environment variables and we'll put them in Docker format. So we'll do dash E um, and we'll maybe like set them like this. And we'll just paste these ahead of our Docker uh, command, but let's go get those keys. So let's go to Langsmith, uh, which is, I believe here, this is Langsmith. We're gonna go get an API key. We'll go to settings and we'll create a new API key and we'll call it um, Langflow video, right? We'll create this API key. Don't worry, it's revoked already. Um, and now we're going to paste it. So the endpoint is the same, tracing is true and the API key we'll put right here. Last thing we need is a project name. So let's go make a project. So we'll go back, um, we'll call it um, tracing project. So we'll make a new project. We'll call it um, Langflow. So we'll call it Langflow, just like that. Look, and it gives us environment variables just like that. So um, cool, I've made this project and we should be good to go. So let's close this. Do I have the project? Um, Okay, well, we, we didn't save, I guess. So we'll go to, um, let's do this without Langchain. And we'll choose Langflow as the name and uh, hit enter, generate API key. Great, config, run any LLM chat model or chain. So cool, we have everything. We're just gonna do this. So we'll copy the API key right here. Great, the project name is Langflow like that. And all our keys are fine. So we're gonna now copy this string and run that same Docker command, docker run dash p 7860 colon 7860, paste our environment variables, langflow ai slash langflow, right? New instance of langflow. Uh, it's gonna be new. We, we haven't been saving any memory or anything. This is super new. So now let's go back um, here and get ready. So let's go back to port 7860. And what we're gonna see is a fresh new langflow instance that, uh, that has just come up from Docker. So that basic prompting flow we've created is gone. We will recreate it again this time uh, to observe how Langsmith works. So with that, let's go back to our terminal. It's starting up and there we go. So it started, let's go here. And welcome to Langflow. Again, basic prompting, exactly the same. I'm gonna copy my OpenAI API key, paste it in here, and we're going to run the flow, the flow with the chat input hello. And the flow, has completed. So now if we go back to Langsmith here, check it out, we have a project Langflow with run count in the last seven days of one, that's our thing. And if we click on it, um, we actually see, hey, this was our OpenAI flow. The chat input was human hello. Hey there, great too. And what is it? Let's see what the AI said. Um, the AI output, hey there, great to see you here. What exciting project or idea are you thinking about building with AI? Let's, does that track? We can go check. Um, hey there, great to see you here. Perfect. In fact, we, we might even be able to command F. There we go. So it's exactly that. Cost us 65 tokens or this figure. Um, time to first token apparently is empty. But this is our thing. And and we have full observability here, into, including all the metadata and everything. And, and I love how Langsmith will show you um, just directly your token counts and time as well, right? And so you can then set up dashboards. In fact, there's some pre-built dashboards, but you can also build custom dashboards to visualize, again, your app's performance and observability over time. Uh, so success and error, thankfully all the success is working. Latency, you can see the latency go up or down. Um, and it's just all done for you with one environment variable. Incredible. 
Uh, Langsmith, Langwatch, um, and Langfuse, they're great tools, honestly. Uh, my personal favorite, I'll save for the end. But let's let's finish this by now exploring Langfuse, which is, very, I think it's the most popular open source project. It's got 20, 26,000 stars on GitHub and more. So with Langfuse, let's go back to the Langflow docs. And again, the Langflow docs have all these answers. Uh, with Langfuse, you just need three environment variables. So we'll do the same process. We'll come here to VS Code, paste these, and do like um, multi-cursor, and we'll just quickly put them in the Docker format like that. Langflow AI slash Lang. We'll just write the Docker command. Why not? Docker run dash p dash p seven eight sixty seven eight sixty. Perfect. So now we just have to replace these things. All right, let's go to Langfuse. This is Langfuse. Welcome. You've got to create an organization in Langfuse. So we'll make an organization called Langflow. Um, great. We created it. Now we'll create a project called Langflow. Um, done. So now we've got to create an API key. I love this onboarding. So we get a secret key that we've got to paste right here. We get a public key that we can paste right here. And we get a host that we also have to paste uh, right here. Cool. Now we have all of these. We can just run this command. So I'm going to go to my terminal. We're going to kill my running Langflow. And we're going to start a new instance this time instrumented with Langfuse. And while that begins, now is the time for me to tell you my favorite of the tools. Uh, my favorite is Langwatch. And again, this is highly personal. Your mileage may vary. In fact, more people than me um, love Langfuse. Langfuse is community-wise the most popular open source one. Uh, as I mentioned, 26,000 stars. We've I've done quite a bit of research around what developers like. Langfuse is the one that is the most loved by far, but Langwatch is not far behind um, in terms of open source offerings. Langsmith, of course, is fantastic. It's battle tested, it's production ready, uh, but it's not open source. And so that may factor into your decisions. Okay, so now there we go. Langflow is running. Let's open up Langflow again. It's fresh, fantastic. Let's do Let's do a simple agent this time, just for a variety. Um, I don't really know what's happening, but let's just copy paste the OpenAI API key right here. Um, cool. And so it has a calculator and it has a URL. So what we can do is maybe do some currency conversion, convert 100 USD to um, Indian rupees. And so we're gonna send that off and it's going to fetch content from the internet. It's gonna do a bunch of stuff. There you go, it did it. Uh, and now if we go to Langfuse, we should have some traces. There we go, one total trace is tracked and that cost about one cent. Uh, let's take a look at what we have. So if we, exp this is like the high level dashboard where we can actually go to tracing and traces. This is our trace right here. And here is here we go, this is the whole layer. Uh, these are our tools and our agent executor did some stuff all the way from input to chat output. And you can see 100 USD is equal to approximately this many INR. Uh, we can also look at the tool calls in here, right? We can look at the, for example, the URL tool call, what happened, um, and so on. So it, you know, did all of these operations. Uh, as well as other tool platforms, we can see um, that this took 4.42 seconds, and there's measures for the cost as well. So it, this is a pre-built dashboard built into Langfuse. One trace was considered, 29 count observations, and your costs are, are here, right? Um, and so very, very detailed, very decent. Um, in fact, some would say very thorough, uh, fantastic. And so this is, and again, you, you can see a nice picture of your cost. You can actually see if you do this, your most expensive portion, which is this part here. And so uh, we've added like highly detailed observability to our Langflow applications in three different platforms by just adding environment variables. And just like that, everything becomes more production ready, more scale ready, and more observable for us to create highly reliable applications and environments and use cases for our users, giving them the reliability that they want, desire, and expect. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we encourage you to be a part of the conversation. Leave comments um, at us on X and follow us and actually just join our chat on Discord. We would love to hear from you. What are you building that is production ready, that could benefit from observability or even has observability? And how are you using observability in your AI apps? Let us know. Until next time, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.